Robo Papa. Hey YouTubers, uh, Robo Papa here. Uh, with today's uh, episode, we will uh, take a look on OpenCV and some software to actually track uh, Red Bull. And the video that um, you can see on the video that display right now, you'll be able to see both of my girls actually playing with a Red Bull uh, while the code of OpenCV is actually tracking the ball and you can see the coordinates of where the, the ball is according to the screen um, that will be <coughs> within that original image and then you can see also the HSV uh, image of uh, the original one as well as the threshold or the binary image um, the track bars are basically what I set up that way I can track that red ball and all of that code is part of the class that I'm going to um, show you right now. So let's get started. So right here, this is basically where I have my class um, that I call block tracking. It's basically using the OpenCV libraries uh, with the high GUID and the core and the OpenCV itself. Um, we have a couple of constructors, um, the default one and something that we can pass in. Um, and we'll go through the code um, when we get to the CPP, um, but for now just the header ones. Then there's one uh, main function which is the process and then another one which is the innate tracker uh, track bars. And you can control those settings and parts of the control of those settings is right over here with all the set and the getters. Um, for those private variables. So for example, setting the, the width and the height, how many objects you can track at one time, what is the minimum and maximum of the object area, do you want to show the track bar or not? Um, that way you can actually control the binary or the threshold and you know set up your values um, if you're just starting. Um, do you want to use the erode and the dilate um, functions? Um, part of the sending up the threshold, um, you use usually a, an erode and dial it. And then if you want to track the object or not, which most of the time you will want to. Um, the corresponding getters are over here, um, that way you can get um, those values if you need to. Um, we're setting up some of the getters for the images, that way this is can be called from anywhere and then all you can need to do is get those images back and then you set up with your main program the windows and the image that will go into those windows and right over here just the private uh, functions like the the morph Im image and the track objects um, that we are using so if you go back to the CPP um, right on the top you can see the default uh, constructor with all the default values so the H value and the M uh, values and the V values. Um, so that's for, that's for the HSV um, image. And it's just an array of two spots. The first one is the minimum and the, the second spot is the maximum. So the minimum um, is initialized is set to zero and the other one sets to two, 256. And I'm working with 640 and 480 for width and height um, respectively. Um, the maximum, the minimum object area that I'm looking for is uh, six, uh, 360 pixels and the maximum will be actually the uh, uh, width and height, uh, the width times height divided by one and a half. That way it's not like going to complete or fully observe the, the image, it's that the, the object should be one and a half size of that height and width. Um, similarly, you can actually use the um, non-default constructor over here, which you can pass in those values. And obviously, you can use the setters and the getters along the way to set whatever you need if you need to change those. The process, which that is the, the main function, will take the original image um, that you actually capturing from your video or if you loaded something, which I'm not sure why you will load an image to do all those tracking. Obviously, for when you track something, you need continuous uh, feed. Um, so as a video, a video is just built of multiple frames. So each frame you will call this process and you send this original image. 
which then we will save it in our private variable over here, which is M original image. We will change the color to HSV and we'll assign it to the HSV image over here. And then we will um, set up the in range for it uh, with the binary trash hole. And those um, in range will use the HSV values that we um, used to set up in the constructor. Um, or if you're using the track bar, it's every time that you're dragging the track bar, it will actually set up the right min and max value for each one of those. Um, then if you use, if you set up either the dialed or the road, we'll call this morph image with that binary um, binary um, image that we get got from in range. And all those are so far, those are um, OpenCV functions. Um, and you can see them hovering on top of that. You can see it's coming from the CV um, namespace. <laughs> if you want to track the objects, then we will call this function track objects and it will return us just uh, how many objects were tracked basically. And then in the end, we'll just return true over here, uh, which right now there's no like error tracking or um, anything like that. So it's always going to return true. Um, the next uh, function that we want, want to look is probably the morph image. Uh, which is right over here um, and I tried to play like a little bit with how many times we want to erode and I tried the one and I tried two and it seems like that with doing twice the erode and twice the dilate makes uh, the best um, solution um, at least for me and the size for the erode is the two by two and the size of the dilate is a six by six so the erode is what it's going to do is like if there's a two by two side that doesn't have the right values, it will make them black. And as far as the dialet, if there's like size that is like six by six, and it will try to dilate it more, like expand it. So then you can get a more complete object. So you're removing the noise and you're increasing your objects. That's the road and the dialet. Um, and once again, those are part of um, part of the the CV um, namespace. Um, and that will run only if you have the um, erode and the di or the dialect. The next one is really just a track object, um, and it's right over here. And all it does, it takes the trash hold as well as the, the original one. And the reason we're passing the original is that way we can actually use it over here to draw the circle. And we're just you know copying the the trash hole that we can manipulate it and we going to find all the contours and the hierarchy of that image um, using the trash hole. Um, we'll use the function find contours that way you can find the, the area that basically you can recognize as an object and we'll go through and we'll just validate that you know we're trying to find the max um, trying to find the max um, area for us. Um, so as long as we have something that we need to track, we will try to find if the area is bigger than the whole area. And that's the one that we're going to um, assign. And we're just going to put a text, which are the points where they find it. Um, you can either draw a circle, uh, you can draw whatever you want. For me, I just draw a circle on it. And I put the text of those uh, coordinates or points in the, the image. Um, the init uh, track bar, which is if you want to use the, the track bar, um, and you can call this from your main project, really all it takes is the window name, and then it's set up the min max values of the HSV. That way you can start tracking. And then on every time that you're moving, it's going to call this on track bar. But really, there's nothing for me to do over here because I'm signing those values to this, um, these three array values. So like the minimum track bar, the maximum track bar for the H value, similarly for the S value, and then it's for the V value. So that's by, in a nutshell, what, what it's actually doing. And if we look on the OpenCV over here, um, that's our main. Um, there's nothing 
um, to it too much. This is where I'm setting up my 0 to 256 and I'm calling it like that. I could have called that also with um, the default constructor. Um, I'm setting it set track object is true, use dilate and use a road is true. I created the track bar um, as a video of the, the window and then I'm initializing it. So that way I can um, start the track bar and if I have an object that I need to um, track or use to see the threshold, I can use those. If you don't want the, the threshold um, or you know the values, you can actually change them here. That way the, you don't need to use the track bar. But if you want the track bar, then that's how you do that. Obviously I'm just creating a frame and the, the capture, I'm opening it with my default um, default uh, camera and then I'm setting up the height and width and then as long as I'm not pressing the key of enter I will continue I will capture the the first frame so capture and then sending it to that frame and I'm going to process it and after I'm done processing I'm going to show the window with the binary that's that's why I have the get binary threshold the get original image and get HSV image so if I'll show an example um, without setting up the the, um, the track bars, I already have something that I can use um, for my um, HSV values. So we'll use uh, minimum is zero for the H, maximum is eight, and then 191 and 67 and let me take my the ball and we'll start it And because I set up those values, then I will not need to use the track bar, and therefore there was no, it's not going to be any track bar um, video or um, window. So here's the threshold. You can see it's mainly black. Here's the HSV value um, image and the original one. So if right now I'll take and I start moving the ball, you can see that it's recognizing it and it start tracking it as well. And as I get further away, you can still track it. And the idea is that you can actually use this as uh, something for your robot that you use a camera and you can start tracking certain objects and just follow those. So that's basically it. That's uh, how you use OpenCV to track um, certain objects. Um, with our next video, uh, actually we'll try to take that with the coordinates and to be able to send that to um, like a camera uh, with a camera to send it through the Raspberry Pi to change the direction of the camera holder that has motors and that will be able to kind of like track or follow a certain object. So let me know what you think or if you have any questions leave the comments uh, below and as always please subscribe um, it helps a lot and until next week thank you.